When you hear the name Land Rover Range Rover, you expect opulence, luxury, and perfection. And this is nothing short of that. This is the new 2024 Land Rover Range Rover SE. Today, I'm gonna bring you a review of it. I'm Aiden, and you're watching God Next. Now, on the exterior of the Range Rover SE, They've not done tons to really change up the look of this, but the look of the Range Rover is somewhat iconic, so it doesn't really surprise me. It's finished in Butami Gold premium metallic paint, and it is beautiful. You have little flakes of metallic in the paint. Up front looks mostly the same. Of course, they've had these new LED lights added in, but looks like a classic Range Rover. Classic Range Rover grille, and just the overall body shape, very boxy looking, very classic for this car, of course, but they've changed some things up. Of course, now on the side, you have the pop-out door handles. And overall, I think its stature just looks a little bigger. Over here, you do have these 22-inch rims. These things are huge in real life to look at, but I think you can get 23s if you really want to on it. But yes, it is beautiful looking. And it is like that throughout the entire thing. So, of course, classic Range Rover. Now back here is where you're gonna notice way more changes than before. Of course, all new taillights back here with a design that kind of integrates it into this placard right here that says Range Rover across the back of it, down to the exhaust tips. This bottom bumper down here is a tad bit different, but of course in Range Rover style, if I can find the button, you do have a clamshell tailgate design, kind of like you have on the X5 or X6, stuff like that. Of course, it folds all the way down. You have air suspension controls right here that allow you to change the height for loading things in. That way it's easier for you. You have a load cover, everything like that. Total of 40.7 cubic feet of cargo space behind that second row. This one doesn't have a third row, but combined you have a total cargo space of around 92 cubic feet, which is pretty healthy. You basically be able to fit anything you want into this car. And of course, you just press this button up here and it will fold the clam and the top shell all together. Let's talk about the engine under this thing because it's going to be pretty interesting. All right, now for what is under the hood of the Range Rover, of course the base engine is going to be a V6, but why would you want to get a V6 in one of these? These things are huge. So Range Rover gives you the option for a V8. That latch is impossibly hard to find. Anyways, under the hood you have a 4.4 liter V8. It is the N63 motor, 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. And to be honest with you, people out there might say that this is an unreliable motor, but who cares? If you are really looking at one of these, you're probably gonna be leasing it because who wants to deal with the reliability and maintenance costs of one of these? So you're probably just gonna lease it and it won't have, most likely won't have problems when you drive it anyways. And this thing is just absolutely insane when it comes to luxury. So who cares? Get the V8, 4.4 seconds to 60. And it actually sounds pretty good. This is what it sounds like. All right, now this is where the magic happens on the new Range Rover is on the interior. And they've done quite a bit to actually change basically everything compared to the last generation. The entire interior has been changed. All the technology is different. And for good reason, the last time I was in a Range Rover from the last generation, what I noticed was it was a little laggy, it was a little outdated, but they've really gone above and beyond on this interior to make it more luxurious and just work better. Starting with the tech in here, of course, all new digital gauge cluster that has this really cool design that juts out of the dashboard. Really clear, really cool, and it has a full screen map if you want that as well. But the center of everything is going to be Pivi Pro, which is Range Rover's new operating system. Actually, it's Land Rover's. They use this in the Defender too. So you have all of this wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, a bunch of like if you're doing off-roading with this, it'll show you a lot of your off-roading statistics, um, weight sensing, all of that cool stuff. You could show the um, how the suspensions compress, the yaw and the pitch of your vehicle as well. And it even has a built-in compass with an altimeter too. Not that you would ever use an altimeter because this is on a plane, but it has an altimeter just in case you care about that. Now, as for comfort in this car, there are very few plastic surfaces in this car just in general. Maybe some here on the buttons. Uh, this is but this is rubber. Some pieces are plastic like this shroud around the Meridian sound system grill. But for the most part, everything is either going to be leather, metal, or wood. Entire center control stack is going to be metal, wood, rubber. Um, and this has like this weird velvety like stuff on it that uh, this material here that feels pretty nice. 
um, on the shift knob, leather on the dashboard with stitching. And then of course you have the contrast stitching across the steering wheel with the black leather all over the top of the door panel on the side. And the seats are just immaculate. These things are so comfortable, it's ridiculous. And I'll show you this in the driving review and explain it then too, but it even has technology to where it will increase the bolstering on either side depending on your turns. That way it keeps you in one spot in the car. Of course, on top of that for comfort, you also have these armrests. These are classic Land Rover Range Rover products. You can get these in the Range Rover Sport as well. Great storage space in here. You can actually option this car with a refrigerator if you want, pretty cool as well. Tons of storage in the upper glove box and a lower glove box holding plenty of things. Dual zone climate control, dual zone fan control, heated and ventilated seats. Higher end trim levels can have massaging seats. This one doesn't. And of course, you also have a full panoramic moonroof. That way you can stare up into the stars while you're in your $175,000 SUV thinking about how absolutely rich you are. Now in the back seats, if you have children or you just have a chauffeur because you're so rich, this is a nice place as well. If you get the autobiography levels of the Range Rover, of course, these are gonna be nicer. You're gonna have a four seat configuration for the entire car instead of a five. You're gonna have way more options back here, TVs, tray tables, all kinds of stuff back here, but it is still pretty nice. You have electronically operated seats because what person wants to fool around with a plastic lever all the time? You have dual zone climate, dual zone fan control, and heated and cooled seats as well. Plenty of connectivity, two USB type C's, a 12 volt socket, and even a 180 watt wall outlet. Back seat space, and of course the materials back here are just as nice. On top of that, you also have sunshade controls over here, uh, volume controls, just in case you wanna mute what the front passengers are listening to because you've got something important to say, and you even have reading light controls on the door panel as well. Center armrest space is pretty nice. You can press this, get access to your cup holders, or press this and have access to some storage back here just in case you need that. But of course, it's just as nice as it ever would be riding in the back of a full-sized Range Rover. Plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom, and I'm slouching too, so I don't think it could be any better than this, other than if you got the autobiography, of course. Now, driving the Range Rover SE, and I gotta tell you, they made quite the improvement compared to the last generation. The suspension, other than what you just saw, because that was like a three inch divot in the road. Um, the suspension in this thing is immaculate and I've used that word a lot, but they have fine tuned the experience of driving this car down to a level that most of the time you wouldn't get out of any automaker, even the nicer German ones. The British just know how to make a car nice to be honest with you that's just the best i could put it you're so comfortable the entire time you're driving in this car now i'm not going to use the meridian sound system in on camera because of copyright reasons and stuff like that but this sound system is fantastic as well i believe there might be an upgraded one the sound stage could use some improvement at least on this one but the bass is crazy if you're into high bass music then you're going to love this sound system just regardless of anything else out there. But yes, it's very, very, very comfortable to drive. The safety tech in this car is also wonderful. 360 degree cameras, 3D cameras where you can move it around where it maps an image onto the screen. Um, up here, you have a rear view camera instead of a rear view mirror, but you can switch between that if you want. <laughs> oh, it uses the ZF8 speed as well. So the transmission is wonderful. Um, it is quick, 4.4 seconds to 60, like I said, and you can feel all that torque as well with the all-wheel drive system in this car, the four-wheel drive system in this car. It puts down that torque immediately for you. Um, so you kind of get like wafted back into your seat here. But of course that doesn't matter because it's so comfortable and these seats are so soft. It's like being pushed into a couch. Like, you know, you don't really, it doesn't really matter. Um, but overall, I gotta, I just gotta say that, um, I know these cars have a stigma, but I just think you have to forget about it and really let yourself experience how nice these are. We just did the Defender not too long ago, uh, and that gave me some worry because they have Pippi Pro in the Defender. A lot of the same materials are used. It is an off-road centric vehicle, the Defender, but most people don't use it for that. So I was a little worried going into this that it would be a little too much like that and not enough Range Rover opulent luxury. 
I was sorely mistaken. I got in this and started driving it, and instantly my opinions had changed. I didn't have that predisposition to thinking this was going to be exactly like the Defender, which it shouldn't be because the Defender is inherently an off-road centered vehicle, and this is a luxury centered vehicle. But, you know, I think when you do go to any brand, it's like if you drive like a, a, an older car and it breaks down, you're going to think all the cars that that brand makes are unreliable. So, you know, I'm very, very impressed with what they've done here. Um, and I really hope they keep going with all this stuff. Like long live Land Rover, that's for sure. And that is the all new Range Rover S. It is a fantastic car for what you're getting, albeit pretty expensive. This one right now being sold is around $138,000 and it starts around $107,000, which is an insane price when it comes to an SUV. But with all you're getting, I think it actually might be worth it because I would never buy one of these. But I think the people out there who love and just want that luxury experience, I think there's plenty of people willing to pay into the mid $100,000 range for one of these cars. But let me know what you guys think of the all new Range Rover. If you guys like the video, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more from us, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video.